He is so original and brash. Let's take a flyer. So said Cheryl Talmy, remembering the decision to book a then entirely unknown David Bowie into some studio sessions to produce a few demonstration songs. That was the summer of 1965. And David Bowie was not yet even David Bowie. He was David Jones, rather like University College Cambridge, in fact. I know it's a painful link. <laughs> Another original and brash idea that was given its head in 1965. The name change to Wolfson came in 1973, and we should, I suppose, parenthetically acknowledge that it was the result of a tremendous benefaction from the Wolfson Foundation. Uh, but by then, David Bowie was already David Bowie in a star, and as you will all immediately noticed, of course, it is from one of his greatest songs, Changes, that I've obtained my title for this evening's celebratory lecture. But still, the days seem the same. So has change made a difference is the sub-theme of the lecture. But before I get to that, we should pause. The Chancellor has referred to it, and John is an embodiment of it. But we should pause to just try and recall how original, how brash this college was in 1965. Uh, no high table. Uh, you know, the other colleges, there might be a tiny little step, but it's a high table. Uh, graduate students integrated into college life. Graduate students normally are marooned in some shed 16 miles from Cambridge. I have a tendency to exaggerate. <laughs> Fellows drawn from the university community rather than homegrown chaps with good table manners. Uh, women in the student body was bad enough. But among the fellows, too. Uh, I, when I started teaching in another college, I remember a college, undergraduates from another college, still another college, should be nameless, arriving with uh, black armbands because in their college women were being admitted. I got an array of, if I may call them this, little boys with gowns and black armbands. And I know I'm old, but I'm not that old. Uh, and you know, we just pause to acknowledge the the fact that we have a founding fellow still alive, Professor Mary Hesse, uh, a founding fellow, remains happily with us 50 years on. The students here clearly still experience today what thrilled me uh, when I showed up from Ireland uh, all those years ago. For me, it was the accidental meetings with the kind of people I'd never encountered before, and who would have been hidden from me in a less brash place. Uh, the Raymond Listers, I don't know if you remember him. Peter and Fiona Plantagenet Somerset Fry. Mary Hesse herself, Owen Chadwick had a connection with the place. Uh, the compelling Dr. Hugh Plummer, his house is over there, but some of you may not remember him. Uh, a founding fellow, I think, whose mind was poured out to his listeners with democratic energy every lunchtime. <laughs> other people were moving in other directions. <laughs> what a guy. And the extraordinary visitors from around the world, Henry West's development course, producing in this place on a regular basis the most remarkable men and women from around the world. Uh, Bill Lubinow, regular visitor, Charles Carlton, the press fellows, uh, such as Judy McGregor uh, from New Zealand, uh, Jack King's police officers, I remember all Jack King's course. And uh, the place was a cacophony of energetic, kaleidoscopic and deeply knowledgeable noise. And I should acknowledge too, it's where I met my late wife, Diane Wales, a member of the college, sadly no longer with us. So it was a fantastic place to be a student. It was incredible to come here. I hadn't an idea what Cambridge would hold, but I didn't think it would hold this.